to the Ronald McDonald House, yeah. right? Um, I think over 2,000 last year, Jerry? A little short of 2,500. A little short of 2,500 tops that they've given the kids that are dealing. So I'm going to let go, Sean go. We're going. <laughs> go. You will be important also. Uh, so anyway, we start off, uh, I start off with a uh, two inch by two inch by 30 or 36 inch uh, piece of hard maple. And I cut that up into uh, uh, blanks. Put a three eighths hole in the middle of the blank and glue in a three eighths uh, birch, birch dowel. And uh, I'm going to do that. Uh, there's nothing to it, but there are, there are some steps that are that are important. Uh, you know, you can you can glue it up, but you want to keep it glued up for I don't know what the life of a top is. Um, I I suspect it could be five minutes <laughs> until it's kind of thrown away. But really, I think the life of a top uh, is is a lot longer than that. Uh, and I think really maybe for several years. Uh, and I'll talk about the glue that you use that, that will meet the requirement of it lasting at least, you know, hopefully forever. Um, 
So we have our dowel, we have our, uh, our glue. I use, um, you could use type bond one, two, or three. You could, you could use um, epoxy. All those would be good, um, good glues to use. Uh, the type bond one has no water resistance uh, or water repellent uh, uh, characteristics to it. The type bond two is a little bit uh, resistant to water and the type bond three is supposed to step that up a little bit more. Honestly, I'm not sure that we need to be concerned about a lot of that. Although, um, you know, we turn, to we turn a lot of tops and I, I turn tops for people I know, my dermatologist, I know she has small children. So I take her tops and uh, uh, a while back I asked her how they were getting along with those. And she said they had already been in the bathtub once and, uh, and, and did not come unglued, which I was really happy to hear, but she said the coloring on them was a little bit uh, less dramatic than it used to be. Anyway, so here we are. We're getting ready to glue the top up. Uh, I mean, this may be more information than you need, but I put one finger underneath and I fill this hole up with glue. So what kind of glue are you doing? This, this, this particular glue is um, uh, Type Bond 2. I have used Type Bond 3, though. I've used, I use both of those extensively. I've never used the one, but honestly, I think the holding strength on them, unless they get wet or something like that, they're all in about the 3,000 pound per square inch uh, holding strength. So I think they're, they're all adequate. And I honestly don't know what uh, uh, epoxy, how, how strong it is, but I think it probably exceeds uh, uh, the, the tie bond. Anyway, so, you know, I've pretty well got this whole glue uh, filled up. All uh, dowel rods are not created equal. And so for about 90% of them that you, that you will cut, and this is a four inch dowel rod, um, you're gonna have to use some force to get it in there, some force beyond just your hand. I have adapted just uh, putting it in a drill and, and, and pushing it in. So you push it, you feel a little pressure on the bottom of your finger, that's the glue, not the bottom of the dowel rod, but that's the glue. And push it on through about three quarters of an inch can now take it out of that. I clean the glue off the very end because that's going to have to go up in a, in a live center. Go around each of the uh, uh, ends uh, and hopefully a, a little bit of that glue will go on down in there also. And it's just that simple. I glue up, excuse me, I glue up today what I'm going to turn tomorrow. I don't try to. I don't try to turn this today. I give it a, a, a good chance to uh, to cure. It needs to cure. You need to glue up, and you need to cure in an environment that's around 60 degrees at least minimum. Uh, otherwise, uh, the the curing process won't uh, be adequate, and and the top could come apart. Um, sometimes my shop is not that that warm, and I'm sure your sometimes your shops are not that warm. So you just, you have to pick your days and maybe I glue up 10. Usually I try to turn 10 a day. Uh, some days I might glue 20 and, uh, and if it's too cold, then, then I don't glue any. When I get down close to the end of the uh, uh, two inch by two inch square, uh, I end up with a larger, a thicker blank. I look at my finger, I cut these on a bandsaw on a sled. I look at my finger and I say, you know, have, have, how much closer do you want to get to that, to that bandsaw blade? And I, I stop about an inch or inch and a quarter away from me. Um, and, and so you end up with this. Yes. It, it, sometimes it does, Anthony. Yes. <laughs> and I won't tell you exactly how, but. <laughs> Your which finger? Yeah. All right, so there we're glued up, and we're waiting till tomorrow to, 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 to turn that blank. Uh, the, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll come back tomorrow. Okay, the equipment that, that I use to turn the tops, to mount it on the lathe, um, is a, it's called a uh, bottle stopper, dowel chuck. It's used for bottle stoppers, and it's used for tops. It's not, it's, it's not your typical... Uh, 
uh, Jacob's truck, the, uh, the jaws in there, when you collapse them to the 3 8 size, they more or less surround the dowel rod completely. The regular uh, Jacob's truck is going to uh, uh, pinch into the dowel rod and it's going to, to cause a weak spot there. So anyway, we use that. We use uh, a regular uh, Powermatic or a one-way live center with the uh, point removed. And when the point is removed, uh, this dowel rod with some force from the from the cranking of your, of your uh, tailstock will go up on there and will secure it nicely. So you've got you've got the long end of the of the blank in the uh, uh, Jacobs in the uh, dowel chuck, and you've got the other end like this. And so there you, now you're ready to turn this thing. Uh, since you're dealing with some pretty small stuff, you can turn it pretty fast, uh, two, 3,000 RPM, something like that. The tools we use, uh, the tools I use, and I think this is true of, of most of them, it would, is a spindle uh, tool with either a 3 8 or a half inch uh, steel in it. Uh, it's ground to a fingernail grind, so you can do a, a couple of different cuts with it. I've always said, uh, you know, a lot of people regard the, uh, the uh, top as a simple project, but really the truth is for the cuts you make, they're the same as the cuts you make. Um, the cuts are the same uh, as that. Uh, so it's, uh, if you can turn if you can turn a, a top, you can you can turn a, a finial or those those kinds of projects also. There's no difference between them. Here's one that was handmade or homemade. Uh, we do we do this. We have them where the tool still removed so that we can when we go to a uh, some place to to make some turn to turn tops, we don't want to take along a whole lot of uh, handles. We just take one or two handles. And then a lot of tool steel that will slip in there and you can secure it with the uh, the set screws. Again, this is homemade. If you don't wanna if you don't wanna make your tools, then this is a Thompson tool and it's it's an excellent one. All right, the safety considerations that I talked about and, and these are not uh, these are not difficult. Uh, the standards are based on what a three year old child can do or not do and uh, so if you build your blanks, if you build any of your turnings uh, larger than an inch and a quarter and are over two inches long, in a perfect world, a three-year-old child cannot swallow that and get it lodged in their airway. Uh, it, we, then that's the problem. When they, when they swallow something, it doesn't go, it, it can go into the stomach and the intestines, but very typically it stops right there. And it constricts the airway, and it can be the re results of that can really be devastating. So I th think we need to pay really, really close attention to those size standards. You may say something like, "Well, I'm turning this for an adult. I'm not turning this for a three-year-old." Again, we don't know what the life of a top is. The life of a top may be several years, and the, and the ownership of that top may change several times down through the years, and it could easily go from a, an adult to a child. Uh, so that's important. Uh, the other thing is uh, the type of glue you use. I've already told you I use the type bond. Uh, if you're using the CA glue uh, for, for tops or really for anything else other than for anything that you want to be permanent, I honestly think my advice to you would be to stop that. Uh, the wood turning world forms and so forth are... Uh, have a lot of uh, uh, indications that the CA glue will lose its bond after a few years, maybe seven or eight years, something like that. Um, the CA glue, if, if you have used it, you know it, it, it puts out a terrible aroma, uh, almost will burn your lungs. I don't think it's a stretch to believe that that could be harmful to you too. Uh, the lawyers have written carefully on the bottle 
uh, do you know only use this in a well ventilated area well how many of us truly have a well ventilated area none of us uh, or maybe just one or two of us I, I turn in the top of my garage some people turn in their basements or in their garage but one thing we don't have typically are a lot of open windows uh, and and those kinds of, of, of things so I you know the CA glue uh, I, I know uh, Lyle Jamison was on the TV earlier when we were warming up for the meeting and I know he uses it to glue his waste block to a turning uh, but it, it only stays there for a couple hours and then it's turned away and, 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 and it's, it's, I think CA glue in that application is great and, and it's something that we can use but not in something that we want to last 10 or 12 years or something like that or even longer. Uh, I think we're going to cover, some of the other guys are going to cover decoration. I, I use uh, brush tip pins with a, uh, with a flexible, flexible end on them. Uh, it's, better, it's better than the ones with the, with the solid, with the rigid end, because this will not wear away and the other one will. Long before you use the ink up, on the other ones, they're, they're good markers, but long before you use the ink up, you're going to wear your tip away and, and you're going to be out of a marker. So that, I use that and uh, some of the markers have a, a solvent in them. Some of them are just uh, water. I think they will both work. Probably the ones with solvent uh, are more durable. And again, you, re you read the same things on the internet that I read. Once the solvent uh, evaporates, they're all as safe as, as any of the others. I think that's all I've got. If, unless there's no questions, I'm going to let the next guy come up here. Have you ever had one return? <laughs> kind of a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, I had one. I've had one return. A young, young, it was a young man, wasn't it? Over at the uh, Discovery Center. Uh, last year, I believe, two years ago, two years ago uh, brought his top back in, and we were just getting ready to leave, and it looked like his dad had run over it with a car, and he said he didn't like it anymore, and he's wondered if he could trade it in for a new one, <laughs> so so we did fix him up. I did want to say, you know, tops, you know, once you start thinking tops, everything's the top, uh, I've got this old truck out there, and inexplicably, uh, the heater control uh, knob came up missing in my truck. I have no idea where it, where it went. I mean, I've looked everywhere for it. So I went down to Picker Pool, and uh, that's, a, that's a place where they take cars that don't run anymore or have been in bad accidents. And I found a, 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 a truck that looked like it had been run over by a, a tank. But when you opened up the other door, there was three pristine knobs there. So I, uh, I took one of those. And on the way home, I thought, you know, uh, it would, might be fun to turn that knob into a top. And so I did, and it works. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. You know, you can get the dowel rods cheaper at places like Home Depot and Lowe's and so forth, but they're, and we've all tried those, they're not durable. Uh, they, they break quite easily. I don't know. They're made from something called white wood. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it may be the popular that you, that you think. And, and, uh, and so I, we use the birch and uh, don't turn it down too skinny and that they last very well. Any other questions? Thank you. One of the things about Jerry is that uh, he is constantly coming up with ideas. Uh, he makes his own tool, but he puts a top on the end of it. Uh, Mike made one too, and his top actually spun until what happened to it? Didn't work anymore. He also comes up with ideas like, let's make tops that fly. Now, the reason you might want to use Tight Bond 3 is that he's undoubtedly going to come up with a contest for turning tops underwater. 
and uh, we'll come come back to the flying top a little bit later. Uh, Phil Royer joined uh, joined the group uh, a while back, and he does some really interesting things with design. I use the, uh, uh, the, the the different live center is because a lot of times I find that the top doesn't turn uh, completely true. So I, I just, before I start turning, I have it chucked up in the, the, the dowel chuck, turn it on. Come in here and turn kind of a, a a little bit of a chamfer on the end of it so that it will go into the, the quarter inch mandrel saver. And when I do that, I know that the uh, top will turn as uh, true as I can get it to turn. If I can get the... There we go. start with a, a, a gouge, sometimes I'll start with a parting tool. Here I'll show you what I do with a parting tool. Turn it around. And the other thing I do is I come in and t turn the, the bottom and the top true. Jerry McMaster did on I don't know whether it was a hollow form or a, a vase but one of the things he showed before you start cutting with your uh, your gouge he came in with some, uh, a tool like this and put a little lip there and then when you do that you've got a little step for your uh, for your gouge to come in and you can just face it off you can do that, and Anthony's good at doing that with, uh, without doing this, but sometimes I get a little, uh, little run back. Oops, this one. Now this too is a Thompson tool, but it doesn't have the nice handle. It's got this kind of ugly grape uh, purple handle to make it less attractive for someone to pick up. And 
And this is a fairly good surface right off the tool. Since I'm going to texture it anyway, I could uh, get by without sanding, but I find if I don't sand it, I don't get very good absorption of the coloring. <clears throat> so I will come in and sand a little bit. I'm using 150, but uh, you could uh, use... Um, on up to about 220, just whatever you want to do. I think for tops, I don't think it's necessary to you know get a perfect finish. I notice I'm still not quite round there. done much texturing probably has seen the uh, 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 sorby spiraling and texturing setup and uh, I, I liked it real well I purchased it but I found that I can't get the texture I want on the tops with the, the orientation of the standard tool uh, if you go out to sorby's website and look at their demonstrations by Nick Agar or some of the experts they'll face out a, a piece pull the tailstock back and come in this way and they get a real nice kind of a snakeskin texture and it works real well. But when you're doing the, the top you can't get in there correctly. So what I did is I modified the tool so that it goes the other way. I took a Sorby cutter, made my own tool this is the, the, the cutters that they sell, and there's also a, a, a bronze bushing that I was able to find that's got a flange on it. And you get the right size screw, this piece here goes over the, uh, the flange, and uh, um, it seems to work real well. So you made that, right, Phil? Right, I made, yeah, used the, the, the Sorby uh, a cutter the flange and then made the handle on the shaft and everything and I come in and I'm able to uh, get the, the maybe a little fast On this outside edge surface I can take the standard sorby tool because I can get in perpendicular to the area I want to enough texture on this outer edge. I also use the uh, Sharpies, but in addition to the Sharpies, I use the Tombow uh, dual brush markers that are sold at Michael's. Uh, my wife does scrapbooking, and after she tries every marker known to womankind, she goes and buys new ones, and I inherit the old ones, and I've got some of those that work well. It, it really doesn't make too much difference. 
One thing about the Sharpies is they're waterproof. These are water soluble, so sometimes I'll put a Sharpie on one part of it and then use uh, the dual brush next to it so it d doesn't blend and get, get all muddy. But I also use all Sharpies or all dual brush or whatever I've got. And uh, make kind of a Christmas top here. What? If, if red and green are Valentine colors, it's going to be one. <laughs> it's too late. Yeah. There we go. Well, I don't think the, the red would go well for St. Patrick's Day. Well, that's Valentine's Day. Okay, okay. The, the, the other thing I said is you turn a few hundred, you get pretty good. And I got to the point where I need to make them take longer to turn so I uh, don't have to make so many blanks. So I've started putting in a few goo guys on the, the shaft. This is another uh, a tool with an ugly handle to uh, make it unattractive, but it is a, a Carter & Son M42 uh, detail gouge. So cut the point. Everybody's got their favorite way of doing the, the bottom. You do a little sanding. I think Jerry uses some Scotch Brite to kind of burnish it. I use the edge of the back of the tool. You go for a sharp point or a round point. And I, I kind of go for a little bit of a round. If it's too, uh, too sharp, unless it's absolutely perfect, it'll wobble. And if you've got a little roundness, it can kind of self-correct. And even then, sometimes it'll wobble a little bit. But that's just my theory. Then go to cut it off. And by using that uh, mandrel saver for the, the tail stop, I've got the, the top, uh, a after I do the point, I've got the top still between two centers. Well, time for design change there. And other than the little mistake, 
Well, I was going to pass it around, but... Something else I've been working on, I, I won't turn one, but I'll show you. I wanted to turn some beads into the, the, the top of the, the top, and uh, a standard beading tool or a, a skew or a, uh, how, a, a, a gouge, however you would turn beads, doesn't really work in the end grain of the top. So I've uh, uh, made my own tool that's like a, a beading tool that, that Sorby and other people make, except that it's kind of at an angle, so I'm able to come in here and apply it from the side and cut the beads, and then... Uh, um, uh, Yeah, yeah. Except that it's, it's this is about about an eighth of an inch, and I've got smaller ones. And also, it's much cheaper. You buy the piece of steel for about uh, you know six, seven dollars, and make your own. And also, you've got two ends, or you can cut in half and have uh, four different ends to cut. Okay, that's about all I've got. Again, any questions? Oh, great. Mm. You probably don't want my mandrel saver in there. There's a wide variety of tops. Uh, Jerry came up with the idea that we ought to make a big top, so <laughs> there's a big top. Think about this one. When you make something this big, it needs a launcher. So you put, have a launcher attached to it, and you have a cord that you need to pull. As I mentioned earlier, he came up with the idea one day of, let's make a top that flies. Well, okay, so I made a top, and I thought I was being really smart, and I hollowed it out, uh, and I made blades, because I didn't know what the lift would be. So I... Pushed them in, I thought, really hard. Got the launcher, set it on a table that was, uh, you know, one of those food tables in the in the family room. Pulled the cord. This flew out, broke the TV. So now my wife won't let me play with my toys in the house anymore. <laughs> this is just a solid egg-looking top, but it needs a launcher. I use the same launcher for the for the other one. This is uh, this may be the most unique top here. I've not seen another picture of this. Is a double-ended top. It'll spin on both ends. It uses a launcher. Uh, you look into a variety of books, and you can find all kinds of different kinds of tops. Uh, they've all got names. Here's a dreidel. Simple top, uh, fun top, they called it. Uh, we're going to get to that. Uh, this is a peg top. This is one of those that you, you can throw. They're fun. Uh, I don't even know where I got this idea from, but it was an egg, shaped like an egg. You have to hold it kind of steady, but it needs a launcher, and you pull it, and it just spins. So you can come up and take a look at all of these things afterwards. Uh, Anthony and I have been messing around. I forgot to bring my whistle tops, but they actually do work. And uh, Anthony brought a couple that he made. And he'll talk to you about that in a minute. And I uh, also made this, uh, this is called a drop top. Uh, 
people think, you know, I, I talk to people, they say, you turn tops? Yeah. Well, don't you get bored turning the same thing all the time? No. Um, as you saw with Phil, uh, you make your own tools. Uh, you come up with different ideas. You figure out how to put a bead on, a, on, on, the, on the disc for the top. Uh, it helps to be kind of simple-minded. <laughs> well, okay, I'll go with that. Uh, this one is... Now, if I've done this right, and it spins. Don't need a launcher for it. If you can make a square, if you can make a cube, you can make a top. So I think you're only limited by your imagination. And I wanted to stress one thing that Jerry stressed, that... Uh, I wouldn't use CA glue on a bed. Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons is uh, you put a blank together. Lots of times we're using square, square wood because it's easier to turn on the bandsaw. And uh, you put this in and you get a catch. It's coming loose. You're going to re-glue it again. Uh, it, this... If I get a catch in this, it'd probably break the shaft, the spindle before it broke the broke the joint. Uh, now somebody mentioned tippy tops, and and uh, there's been somebody been practicing tippy top making for uh, uh, for a couple of weeks. So, and there's a I'm not gonna steal any of your thunder, Anthony, but Jerry's notion of making a tippy top is that you gotta drill something in, you gotta have it hollowed out. And Anthony's going to show you how to do it without doing that. <laughs> Your boss. Your boss. Let's hear it for Sean. Since that time, whenever I see uh, other people uh, make them and hollow them out, I always want to do it different. And I actually did, used to hollow them out. I would make a top and spin it, and it wouldn't work. And so I would put it in a jam chuck and return the top. That's what uh, this is. This is one that uh, I put in a jam chuck hollow it out, return the top of it. Um, and so I've been trying to make some without uh, cutting them, without drilling them. I don't want to buy the, the round balls either. I'm cheap. And so I, I've been actually, I mean, I don't remember when we started making tippy tops, but it's been... 15 years or something. It's been a long time. And I, so I think I tried on three separate occasions. You know, like it may have lasted six months or a month or they may have lasted a year. Just leave those in your <laughs> And so I started making them. Uh, this is the third time. I used to make them, and they would succeed, like every 10th one or every 15th one would succeed. I wouldn't hollow it out, and it would work, and I couldn't tell you why. And so I couldn't cause them to happen either. So last week, I was able to make, uh, this is uh, one of two that worked when I made six. So I made one-third of them work. And so I'm now using this as a uh, pattern, and we'll see if it works. Still don't know why at all. Well, I, I'm beginning to get an idea, yeah. Okay. 
and, but I'm not certain yet because uh, the next three tops I made after this, it was the following day, uh, all three of them succeeded. And then the next day I said, okay, I'm going to make another one, and it didn't succeed. Uh, and are all of these made out of the same wood? No. Or is the density of the wood changing? Yes. Which then changes the yes. could. center of mass? Yes, it could. I don't know. And in fact, uh, all of the ones I made that worked were made out of uh, sugar maple, Osage orange, ash, and pear, Brad Bradford pear. And this is poplar. And so I don't know if it's going to work or not. We're going to find out, though. Looks wiggly. I measured the width. It's actually a hair small. Here's the height. You know, you're not supposed to move this, right? Okay. What? Oh, yeah. It sounds like, no, I won't do that. Never mind. So, uh, I, uh, you cannot turn a perfect sphere, or I, I find that if you turn a perfect sphere, the tippy top doesn't work as well. And so, in the uh, Texas parlance, you have to squash it a little. Here's the top of it. Sandpaper. Okay, we'll just do it without. We'll, we'll just see how it works here. Usually, 
when I do this, it has a little uh, point on the top, and you have to go sand that off. Challenges of the Jerry, what would you say? Two tops. Two tops? Okay. <laughs> two tops. So you're going to donate. Donated. Two tops to donate. All right. That's the challenge for next month. Bring in a couple tops that you're willing to donate that you've made.
knowing what you just saw today. We we got a uh, ga or a one pound Folgers bucket in on the table. If uh, you can't get them here to the meeting, feel free anytime, any open shop. Drop some drop some uh, tops in the bucket. It's uh, good for everybody. It's good for our club. It's good representation of our club, and it makes us look good to the community. Uh, that's always important. So. Yeah, if we start to fill up that, we'll get a we'll get a 55 gallon drum or something. We'll fill that thing up. So, <laughs> um, thanks, top guys. I appreciate the time and, and obviously the effort and, and all the uh, um, influence you have in in the 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 lives that you touch with these tops. I think that's tremendous. Um, I'm trying to keep this rolling, so let's go on and start our break. But during the break, if you have a chance, go back and look at the silent, uh, silent auction pieces. Look at the art pieces. Mark your numbers down. Mark your numbers down. So um, after the break, we'll come back 